Hello and welcome back to unit tutorials for science year 4 unit 3 living things and environments and this is video part 2. This video will walk you through the following areas how to adapt activities and lessons and key moments within the unit to look out for. Adapting activities can be easily done by using the ebook workbook and the snipping tool to paste the activity onto a word or publisher document and edit it. From there, you can print it and stick the adapted activity into your exercise book or directly over the workbook original activity. You may be familiar with the snip tool, but it can be found by searching in the search bar or simultaneously pressing Windows, Shift and S. Drag your mouse to highlight the area you want to copy and that selection of your screen can be copied onto your clipboard and then onto your Word or publisher document. Now I'm going to talk you through how you can adapt activities in the pupil workbook. We don't have time to go through every activity in this unit, so I have selected one or two from each lesson. The adaptations we look at here are suggestions and you should use what works best for your pupils, but hopefully this is a useful starting point for you and will start a bank of adaptation ideas. In lesson one, people should draw out an animal or a plant and list the seven characteristics of life. Underneath, they have a table of different objects and they should write whether they have lived, they are dead or they have never lived. Support pupils by adding a plant or animal outline, by creating a bank of keywords that pupils could use to label, by adding the objects to the table in advance, and stretch pupils by asking them to explain how they know those objects are living, have once lived or have never lived. In lesson two, pupils need to read some text and undertake two investigation activities. Support them by highlighting the key information in the text, by providing definitions to pupils to stick next to the correct keyword, by adding the habitats in advance, and stretch pupils by showing them a picture of a habitat and ask what animals, plants and environmental conditions they may find there. In lesson three, pupils have a lot of space to complete two right questions. For activities with a lot of space for answers, you can remove some of the lines by adding a white rectangle over the top. You could also add images in the blank space to support understanding of the question. Alternatively, you could give pupils multiple choice options to choose from. Stretch pupils by asking them to create their own food web with different animals. In lesson four, pupils need to investigate an animal from each category and then explain how they know they belong there. Support pupils by adding images of each category of animal for pupils to investigate. You could give pupils pre-prepared resources of these animals or if using laptops, have websites ready. Or you could add text boxes with information on each category of animal using the definition activity for pupils to sort and stick in. Stretch pupils by showing them a picture of, anim of an animal and ask them what category of animal it would fit in and why. In lesson five, pupils need to use their data from an investigation to complete a pictogram. Support pupils by adding the pictogram key column in advance, by adding the pictogram graph for pupils to populate, and stretch them by asking pupils to create questions and answers based on the pictogram data. To support pupils in Lesson 6 activities, add some of the organisms into the answer boxes, add some explanations over the lines, or give pupils explanation labels to stick in. Stretch pupils by asking them to create more questions based on the organisms to test their partner with. To support pupils in lesson seven, you could create labels for each section for pupils to read and stick in. You could add photographs from the investigation and stretch pupils by asking them questions such as, what surprised you about your discoveries and why?
support pupils in undertaking these activities in lesson eight. You can give an example in each column for the first activity. You can create an additional resource with images next to each keyword to support understanding. You can give pupils different labels on the negative effects from deforestation to choose from. And stretch pupils by asking them to write a speech on the effects of deforestation. To support pupils in lesson nine, you could add an image or a photo from the investigation to the space. You could add the starting temperature into the table. You could work as a class or in small groups or in partners to discuss the three written answers before pupils write down their own. Stretch pupils by asking them to write a definition for greenhouse gases. And to support pupils in lesson 10, you could ask them to list two things instead of five. You could remove some lines for each answer so people could write a shorter response. You could create answer labels that pupils read, sort and stick in. And to stretch pupils, ask them to create a poster or presentation or a slideshow presentation on environmental issues today and what we can do to help. Prepare for the unit by planning an engaging hook to get pupils excited for the learning to come. Print off any additional resources per lesson and gather resources for specific lessons using the unit planning guide. Hopefully you now feel confident about accessing and teaching this unit. Any questions, please send to primarymastery at artcurriculumplus.org.uk. We welcome all feedback to ensure these resources are as supportive as possible. Thank you.